April 8th, we left Jacare this morning, about 6 o'clock at the um, slack tide. And uh, it was rather drizzly this morning, but once we got away from the land, it, uh, it became much nicer out. And uh, now it's turned out to be a rather nice day. Uh, waves are not too high, uh, wind is not too strong. Uh, but uh, it's enough to push us downwind at 7 knots. And w with what appears to be a 2 knot current, we're pretty consistently going at 9 knots. So it's pretty impressive. We've moved out away from the shore, we're about 20 miles out, and we're going to kind of maintain that distance. Since uh, we don't know if this area that we're passing by here to the north of Jacare is perhaps uh, a little more crime ridden. And we heard one report of one of our friends being chased by a fishing boat for quite a while. Now, again, we have no idea whether there was any real danger involved in that, but that's what the story was. So we're staying offshore and we're not broadcasting our AIS, we're just in receive mode. So we try to slip along here unseen. And um, we had no problems. Uh, Government-wise, uh, with Brazil, uh, they never know, knew we were there. And um, we are planning on stopping one more time in Brazil at an island that kind of breaks up the trip into equal parts, uh, going from here to French Guiana. Uh, the little island, um, I can't remember the name of right at the moment. Uh, but uh, we're going to be going there and uh, just uh, relaxing there in, in very good holding area, very protected water of a tidal stream. And uh, just hang around there for a couple of nights only, just to get a little bit of a rest and make a break before we carry on. Well, the seahorses can smell the barn and... Uh, like me, they were anxious to get going and head toward Grenada and finish the circumnavigation. So we're going to try to keep going as quickly as possible, no major stops. Uh, French Guiana, we're still undecided whether or not to actually check into the country or just to stop and anchor at uh, the Devil's Island complex in Three Islands and uh, go and take the tour there and then perhaps leave after a day or so without actually checking in. Um, that's still up in the air. But anyway, it's going to take us about five days, I think, four or five days to get to this uh, island stopover. It's uh, about uh, 700 and almost 800 uh, nautical miles away from the Jacare. So it's a good distance, but we're moving very quickly. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, that uh, just uh, about a half an hour ago, we passed by uh, at least two, possibly three whales playing in the water. I happened to see uh, one of them just off on the starboard beam as it was going by, only 15 meters away. It was a small whale, well, smaller than the boat here. And uh, then after that we saw other spouts. So, uh, Coming so close again to a whale, it kind of uh, gave me the willies again. You know, we're doing nine knots and to actually well, seven knots through the water to hit one like that could be da very dangerous for the whale and for us as well. So I'm really hoping we don't have any more close calls like that. Anyway, the camera was down below. I wasn't able to get any video of it. Yeah, this is what it looks like off the northeastern coast of Brazil. <laughs> looks quite a bit like all the rest of the oceans, doesn't it? Anyway, the wind has died enough that we've been able to put up the asymmetric. But it will climb again before we get to our destination. Le Soie, I believe it's called. A little island off the northern coast of Brazil just north of the Amazon River. We'll be there for a couple of days. I had done a repair on the mainsail where one of the, um, off Madagascar, where the, where the uh, uh, batten fell out of the pocket into the ocean. I got a replacement in South Africa. 
and uh, I did a what I considered to be a more proper repair job on it, but I was concerned because the batten didn't appear to be in a pocket at the end of it. It looked like all the material of the pocket was on the one side of the batten, and um, I tried many times to try to insert it properly, but it just wouldn't go in. Anyway, I thought, well, it'll probably last at the end of the trip anyway, so we'll make, make do with it the way it is. Well, it didn't even last to the point where the sail was completely hauled up the mast. Got three quarters of the way up the mast, and I look, and the batten's already poking out of the end of the sail. So we dropped the sail quickly, rescued the batten, and I'm going to try to fix it in Le Soir. And uh, by uh, actually cutting into the sail a little bit and sticking my finger in and trying to place the batten inside the pocket properly as we feed it in. That's the only thing I can do, and then try to stitch up a hole later. Otherwise, it's going to have to wait for the grenade. Whenever we do fly the mainsail now, we it's missing one batten, which isn't really a big problem. Coming up to enjoy the sun, oh, yeah. the breeze. The cooler air. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad day today though, eh? It's not no. as hot. No, but it is hot down below, so. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got another 200 and something miles to go before we pass a waypoint, and then 318, I believe it is after that, to the entrance to our little uh, anchorage. Okay. So Brian's going to take a dip, since we're traveling so slowly. You can't hold it like that. No. Oh. Okay. It has to be like that. Okay. Otherwise everything's on a slant. Okay, oh. yeah, I had a haircut. And now this is my chance to uh, get rid of the little hairs. I don't know how deep it is here, but <laughs> probably more than 3,000 meters. So we'll see. One nice thing is that it's, it should be warm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's about 32 or 33. So. Oh, it's scary. <laughs> oh, it's so scary. <laughs> Hoping it doesn't take my bathing suit off. <laughs> oh, I'll just keep filming. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be fine. Oh, pretty good current. Yes. Um, Maybe we can get Matt to uh, sock that uh, asymmetric. And you'll un and just stop? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just I'll press the... Uh, stop. Off. Hang on. Do you need me to loosen up the sheet? No, I got it. Come on, little doggy! Yeah, Better? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, now that we've slowed down about as much as we can, right. off you go. Oh. Oh, it still pulls a bit. <laughs> Here I am in the oh. South Atlantic. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I want to have my goggles on so I can see underneath the water. Ah, well. Oh, the hull looks nice and clean anyway. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to turn this off and then go put my bathing suit on because we're rolling like crazy here. Well, I probably traded some little cut hairs after my haircut for some sargassum, perhaps. Uh, we've been seeing a lot more sargassum uh, going past the boat now. Uh, I haven't seen that much of it elsewhere. But I guess we're getting closer to the Caribbean. 
and now the other guys want to come up and take a turn too. Why not? Don't pinch yourself on that. On the ladder? On the ladder, it comes up and down. Nice. And something tickled my leg, and then I realized it was the string for the yeah. So that just want to make sure something wasn't something live grabbing me. Oh, oh man, that feels good. <laughs> No. I noticed while I was in there, I seemed to slow down a bit, so. Just don't pinch your uh, feet or hands in the ladder, which goes up and down a bit. Right. And that's the last we ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Still got your mask? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I wonder if I can get it on or not. Well, you, yeah, because you really need to hang on. <laughs> Nothing but blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is creepy if you stop to think that you're in thousands, thousands and thousands of feet of water. Yeah, that's true. After a nice swim, a little bit of lunch. Crackers and cheese. Crackers, cheese, tequila, and beer. Beer. <laughs> and the doldrums are here. Not even enough wind for the asymmetric. These fishing boats are everywhere out here. This one was only about 60 meters away. Well, it's almost the uh, 9 o'clock on the morning of the 13th of April. And uh, although this has been a fairly pleasant passage with uh, lighter winds, a lot of motoring, uh, we're in the doldrums now along the coast of Brazil. Um, it has turned out to be Kind of a long passage, I think, for everybody. 
it's Saturday. We left on Monday. I think we're all just uh, itching to get back into the barn. So uh, anyway, we're close on the coast now. And uh, that island, Lensois, where we want to stay for a couple of days just to rest a bit on our way to French Guiana. Starting to see some uh, sandbanks in the distance here. It's gotten quite shallow. We're into the teens now in meters. And so we start our turn up in behind the island. This is a uh, path that only works when the tide is high, so we're on a climbing tide. We'll see what happens. Yeah, if we pass up behind the island here, it's we still got nine meters underneath us. It's more than we expected. So that's good news. Thank goodness it's nice and calm back here. I was wondering what those brilliant orange things were over there, whether they were flags or something grouped together. Hazard a guess what they might be? They're birds. We're working our way up here following waypoints. Yeah, they're birds. One just flew from one spot to another. Brilliantly orange. And I have to start to pay attention here. We're getting a little shallower. No, I don't think so. So this is just a little sand island that's been uh, deposited here by the tides and the river. The rivers that are inland from here. I also scoured out the channels. Where we are right now, it's three meters deep at the moment, and when the tide goes out, this might even dry out here, or they get very close to it. There's a heron. I'm wondering if those birds are flamingos. Oh, they just flew away to that far bit of land there. It's the most orange looking flamingos I've ever seen. There they go. Now, this is the route that we're on, but. It's hard to trust it when we're this close to shore. There are a couple, of, at least one sailboat up ahead of us in the anchorage. This is nice after we get by this point. The land is all low. A 
there and uh, that'll give a really nice breeze. I don't think we're going to have any problem with bugs here at all. Well, if it's all sand around here, we probably won't have bugs. Uh, beautiful. And there's a, there's a sailboat that's anchored down here by this point. So we'll go past him up toward the anchorage. Oh, and then it's open water over there, is it? Yeah. This is a little village that's here. Cerise. Well, the first day it was something on the shore that looked like horses or perhaps cows. And there was a pack of three dogs, one of which was not interested in playing. One which was sort of aloof, and the other one wanted to play. And then we thought, maybe there were goats. And now there's something that looks like black chickens. <laughs> But they're not chickens, they're some sort of large bird. We haven't got our binoculars. On the 15th of April, our two nights of relaxation are finished now and we're on our way. On the way to French Guiana, uh, saying goodbye to Brazil now. Well, it's Tuesday, the 16th of April, and Prince Diamond is churning north, 330 degrees quite a bit uh, off the shore now and uh, approaching the mouth of the Amazon. And we've been moving really pretty quickly. Just a while back there we were doing over eight knots consistently, which would have left us getting uh, to our first waypoint 400 miles away in two days time. Here's 
something else of interest. After years in the southern hemisphere, Fritz Diamond is now going back voluntarily into the northern hemisphere. Crossing the equator in just a short little while. Back in the northern hemisphere again. Do you feel that bump as we tripped over the line? Well, yeah. maybe not, but it has been a bumpy night. You'll see there's some areas over there of water which are kind of smoothed out. They've got wind ripples on them, but they're smoothed out. Same thing ahead of us. But then right there, for a second, came a commotion that caused me to grab my camera, and it was like a leaping and dancing of little waves. These are current effects. I believe that we're actually experiencing the current of the Amazon River coming out. We're quite a distance away. Could be also mixed in with tide. If the tide's on its way out, that'll be helping the Amazon empty a lot of water out into this area. But the ocean yesterday and today has been looking very strange, I noticed. Up here I've had these waves are rolling in from the ocean, but they get up to this point and then they stop. And after that it's more laminar. Again, that's got to be current. Bands of current, areas of swirling current. It's pretty interesting. It's not the whole area of the ocean, it's only pockets here and there acting strange. It's not all that deep here either. Uh, the last time I looked, it was about 30, 40, 50 meters, that's all. We haven't been off soundings yet on this passage. Very interesting. And uh, some of this current is smoothing the waves out, making it very quiet. I thought this was sargassum we were coming up on, this huge field of yellow and orange, but it's actually uh, kind of like a coarser version of that um, dusty-like stuff that we saw near Australia. Oh no, I stand corrected, it's sargassum. My goodness. <laughs> it's like sailing through a wheat field or something. Very strange experience. Look at this, Carol. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just gone absolutely quiet and we slowed right down yeah. too. Oh. It's actually slowed us right down. Yeah. Well, the wind has died a bit too. Yeah, and you wonder if it would foul the propeller if you were using it. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad not to be running the engine right now. It's hard to say. There's an end in sight, though. Yeah, it's hard to say how thick that is. It may, may only be a number of inches thick. I can hand you the boat. Follow you. Yeah. If I was motivated, <laughs> which I'm not. <laughs> it was just weird sitting down there and hearing the sound. Yeah, it slowed right down. Down to a crawl. Uh, 
Let's see if we pick up speed again when we get out of the other side of it. Lots of plastic garbage. after, well, a little bit before dawn now, uh, but it's quite gray out here. There's a little bit of blue sky behind us, but mostly gray, yellow clouds. And uh, one interesting thing is, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but that's uh, one of the Salvation Islands there. Perhaps you can see the light on it. Devil's Island, part of that prison complex. Anyway, we're going to go up the Kuru River before we go to see that and do our little rest and relaxation here in French Guiana. Well, as we make up, make our way up the access channel, I have to say we had no idea what to expect of French Guiana. I guess all our ideas about the place come from the past. You know, Dustin Hoffman and Steve McQueen. <laughs> but anyway, we've seen a couple of catamarans coming out, like party boats. They just, we thought maybe they're going over the island, but they're actually going out sailing. Oh, here comes another one. It's Good Friday today, so maybe that's why everybody's gone out and uh, has a day off.
Okay, Matt snubs the anchor here. We're in the river. And um, this is the anchorage here in the Kuru River. There's a wind coming from the stern, even though there's quite a current flowing past us, it was pushing the boat up into the stream a little bit against, you know, with the wind against the current. But we have the anchor now set. We backed down on it with the engine, 2,000 RPM, to set it nicely, so I think we're in good shape. Well, getting into the dinghy uh, was quite a bit of a chore with the current running, but we managed to do it. We waited till well after low tide. I can't say that, uh, that the current really stopped running very fast, but it slowed down a bit. And now we're coming ashore. We're gonna work our way toward the town following some directions that I have found in noon site and see if we can get to the town, find some internet, that sort of thing. This is Kuru. We have to walk a kilometer to a roundabout and then through the roundabout and a distance on the other side to find the closest internet according to our guide. Some of these buildings are quite old. Which makes them really interesting. Well, we found our internet and had a little bit of lunch. So that all worked out well. Okay. La Diri, Arico Rouge, ou sinon Diri Lanti. Ah oui. Oui. Moi, Diri Collé. Collé. En Haïti, non. Ah, ok. Non, ici, c'est pas mélangé. Ok. Non. Ok. Ça, c'est un Diri, Arico Rouge, ou sinon Ri Lanti. Ok. Ok. Uh -huh. Avec poisson, c'est dans viande, okay. viande bois, red beans, yeah, yeah. viande well, sauvage. Maybe they have a, they, they do combine rice and beans, uh -huh. but here they do separate. Okay, yeah, ça regarde. Okay. Okay. Cochon bois et pâques, c'est ça. ça. Oh, this picture. Cochon mm. bois et pâques. Oh, Cochon wow. sauvage et pâques. Okay. Oh. Uh -huh. Ou sinon, il y a poisson. Beaucoup yeah, poisson. Yeah, ah, oui, oui. Poulet, oui, poulet, colombo poulet. We were noticing here that uh, this uh, beer, Desperados, which you can get in Canada as well, but this version here has the dreaded cachaca in it. Yeah. <laughs>